Shout out to the gang, wherever you are around the world, getting that money. Yeah, it's definitely official. I'm back outside. Um, yeah. But I'm, I'm not outside, but I'm inside. I'm back inside. I'm not going to go back outside. But I went outside, and I loved it. I loved it. It was beautiful. Now I'm back inside. Shout out to the gang that's outside. All right, don't forget where you come from. Yeah, love. Guy in the building. Hey, yo. This guy right here, one of the hip-hop entrepreneurs, young legends. He's in, he's in my gang. He gets money. Yes, he does. Yes, I'm inspired, though. God is good. <laughs> Oh, okay. Oh, we see somebody. Oh, 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 they, oh, they showing up for training camp in here. As a member of the new franchise, how you feel? My boy got art outside his house. I ain't never seen it <laughs> in my life. Right. How do you feel being a part of this franchise? Oh, my God. If your name is Ray J, then sorry to break it to you, but you might need to ring up one of Diddy's lawyers. Word on the street is that the American singer might have been working with Diddy and his master Clive Davis to secure his seat at the table. We're talking taking advantage of other artists and getting up to some freaky stuff in the bedroom. Girl, it's crazy stuff. So there's a blind item going around that apparently involves Diddy, J. Lo, and Ray J. According to the anonymous report, after Aaliyah passed away, Ray J got a hold of Ashanti to take on her role. Now word on the street is that Ray then sold Ashanti to Diddy, who proceeded to treat her like an object if you get what we mean. Now this went on for a while, but somewhere along the way, Ray told Diddy he can't sleep around with Ashanti anymore, and that's when Diddy got her blackballed. Now there seems to be some truth to the rumors, since Ashanti did appear on the scene only to drop out of the game with no explanations. But that's not the focus of the conversation here. We're here to talk about Ray facilitating Diddy. And guess what? This ain't the only skeleton in his closet. Jaguar Wright sitting on a whole lot of Ray's secrets. According to Jaguar, Ray helped Clive take out Whitney Houston and her daughter, Bobby Christina. They have a new biopic with Whitney Houston coming out. I don't, if, if they play this movie and you see no kind of drugs in this movie, you feel like it's an injustice to what this look. I feel like anything was. with her name strictly for the purposes of financial gain for those who have access to her estate, including Clive Davis. Including Clive Davis. Clive Davis. This ain't a film to celebrate Whitney Houston. This is a film to, uh, you know, pay the, pay, the, pay the piper. He was the one trying to bring her back, though, at the time of, prior to her death, right? Fuck it, him. Uh, okay. He needed her back. Oh, yeah. He needed her back, but he needed her back and under his control. You want to know what fucking Clive Davis did for Whitney Houston? Why he was busy trying to bring her back? See, people forget before she came to the United States, he sent her on an international tour. Mm. And she went out on tour and she was still getting high at the time. Um, you know, let's see. What happens if I put in Whitney Houston? Kazakhstan. Mm. That's what she was doing. What? You done in Kazakhstan? Oh man. This was not long before she passed away. I think I know. What oh, you here's the full concert. She only did four songs. Yeah, I think I know. You, but I think I remember the voice. Huh? Yeah, I remember you I, with the voice. I know you're about to go with this. I think I remember this. Not just the voice. Just everything. The whole show. <laughs> Ouch. Straight to yeah, the mercy. Yeah, 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 it's a, yeah, I see that. It's definitely a, It'll a, make you cry if you really love music and if you really love Whitney Houston. And then after a couple of joints, you will find it hilarious. Mm. Because, not because you're happy that she's falling apart. It's just she's doing the crackhead antics so dope. You know what I mean? It was, she was in it. Huh? <laughs> what? Nigga, what's my key, bitch? Uh, like she's uh, in front of the president of Kazakhstan. Oh my god. Oh my god. But it was good enough to get that check though. And then he put her in rehab to clean her up right before it came time for America because she had to at least appear sober in America for the whirlwind story. And then they then they, they brought in R. Kelly to do that song for her. The pedophile. that she had to use auto-tune to sing because her lungs were so jacked up from all the smoking. And 
you know, a lot of people didn't know she was a heavy smoker. She was a chain smoker. She smoked three packs of Newport today and still could sing like that. But when you add in the cocaine or the crack and then the this and the that and then the when they did her autopsy, they said there was nothing wrong with her throat. She, her lungs were so damaged that she couldn't fuel the notes. It was her lungs. It wasn't, her voice was fine. Oh. That's, that's, how, that's how Clive did it. And then the next thing you know, she's fucking Ray J. And yeah, then yeah, it's that Grammy happened. time. That happened. And her and Clive had a fight two days before. And from what I was told, Bobby Christina was present for some of that fight. And then the next thing you know, um, she's dead. Ray J was the last person to see her alive. He let the drug dealer in, but she was sober, right? But he let the drug dealer in that gave it a shot. Leola has said, Leola Brown, Bobby Brown's sister, has said on several occasions that her she was beaten. They saw her body. She didn't just die in a tub, like she was beat up. And Brandy was the one that found her. But you know, they they pledge allegiance to yeah. Clive too. Jeez. Well, you know, Ray J was kind of down on his luck because the whole bullshit had happened and then, you know, Whitney was dead and he was using her as he's said himself for clout and then all of a sudden he got love and hip hop. LA after Whitney died. And you know what else is interesting? The fact that Whitney's own sister called out Ray J for her passing. Leola said, I saw Ray J coming out of the hotel, hiding his head, being pushed into the car, and that looked super sus to her. She also went as far to say that Ray was not actually Whitney's boyfriend, but her runner boy responsible for scoring her substances. And according to Jaguar, he was given that role by Clive Davis. Now Jaguar might be right on the nose here since Diddy and Ray J have been close for years. Ray's been spotted at Diddy's mansion a couple of times. On the road, we're taking the show on the road. Yeah, ATL. <laughs> 48 hours, that's it, baby. Then I gotta go, and I'm leaving with all the soul. Yeah. And there's a high chance that Diddy might have introduced his boy to his master, Clive Davis. You see, there have been rumors about Diddy being Clive's boy toy for a while now. He loves power. He loves the ability to manipulate and control people. Why? Most likely because he was victimized by his mentor, who loved to control people. And his mentor was Andre Well. Tell, tell us how he was, was mentored by Clyde Davis. Oh, oh God. It don't tell me that Andre Harrell got touched by Clive Davis too. I'm telling you, I don't know what happened between Andre and, and, and Clive. What I do know is that Andre got passed over. Like, wow. how do you go from being the president of Uptown and losing your entire company to your intern? Like Puff started out as an intern. Yes, he was he throwing parties with Mark Barnes in Washington, D.C. And then he became an intern at Uptown. And he was very, you know, proactive. And, 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 and he, if there's one thing that Sean knows, he knows pop culture. That is true. He knows what's hot. Like, I, cannot, what I cannot take anything away from where he has been extremely effective. Yes. He knows pop culture. Matter of fact, he probably knows pop culture better than he knows music. And you know what else is interesting? The fact that on the day Whitney passed away, Clive was in the same building partying away the night with Diddy. Now a lot of fans believe that Clive and Diddy enlisted Ray J to help them out with sacrificing Whitney. And in return, he got a music career. And if you find that hard to believe, look at how nervous Diddy got when he was asked about Whitney on the Ellen DeGeneres show, days after her passing. I know that you were the first, uh, one of the first ones at Clive's party to speak about Whitney's mm -hmm. passing the other day. Yes. And uh, that, it, that was, um, did you know her well? Yes, I did. Mm -hmm. um, I actually, when I, was, when I was growing up in the music industry before I had success, I somehow got on her wedding invitation. So I was at her wedding, but, but I didn't really know her. 
but it was like the hottest thing in town for the music industry. But yeah. I didn't crash the party somehow. You know, I was a hustler. I got my name on there, me, right. me plus one. I went there and I was just like, oh my God, I'm at Whitney Houston's wedding. You know, I was a big Bobby Brown fan. And then throughout the years, I got to meet her. And she was so full of life, so full of just joy. And um, it, it, she, she, she always made you feel like she was, she noticed you and recognized you and spoke to you. And she, she'll definitely truly be missed. Yeah, she yes. will, I agree. She was an amazing a talent and it's, it's heartbreaking really. It's but what's ironic is that despite the evidence stacked against him, Ray J continues to call out Diddy. He even went as far as to say that Diddy's got a demon inside him. Maybe Ray thinks that judgment won't come for him. How you feel about everything that's going on with Diddy right now? It's just not okay. And you know, when somebody is around somebody, and we're counting on them to be our, one of our leaders in a space that we're all trying to get to. That's not acceptable to do. And um, it's not okay. I mean, it might be forgivable in the sense of a spiritual realm of life or forgive everybody, but it's unforgettable. And that's where you just draw the line on friendship and hanging out and, and supporting and being cool. It's like, niggas, it's done, you know, and that's it. Yeah, that video was out of pocket, man. It should never get to that point where you stumping a female, man. It's not okay, man. And it's not, and it's not something that niggas can just take lightly, you know? Cannot do that. Not okay. Niggas not cool. Period. You knowing Diddy personally, was you surprised when you seen that video? Heartbreaking. And shameful. And unacceptable. I've never seen nothing like that. I've never seen nothing like that in the, in the history of my life. So, that's a new for me. I don't know what kind of demon you are, but you know, somebody need to fucking form an exorcism fast. Yeah, I feel you, man. I mean, I'm still in disbelief about what I seen. To see him kicking her like that, man, yeah, that was crazy, man. There's no, there's no place in, in, in that. And for somebody like me or anybody to say what I'm saying, they better not have had something like that happen. You get what I'm saying? Because now they didn't put their whole self at risk with being honest. You know what I'm saying? It's like people watch these reality shows and you see certain people arguing and shit get a little tense right on reality but there's a there's a certain level of where you don't go you get what i'm saying he also sat down with shannon sharp on the club shay shay podcast and admitted to hanging out with diddy and cassie there's some people recently that you know you um and your friend cool with mm -hmm. the r kelly situation and the diddy situation yeah. I What's going through your mind when you hear, when obviously R. Kelly, his, his thing has already been handed down. He's already received his punishment and you see Diddy going through what he's going through. It's heartbreaking, man. Everybody messes up, but um, that's, we can't, we can't, we can't, we can't be cool after that. It took me like a week to like, Some, it's unforgettable. Unforgivable is, is is too much. Never being able to be around us in our world because we don't condone that is definitely a, a fact. And from there, you have to go on that journey on your own and, and find, find yourself and find forgiveness for yourself and somewhere far away from where we are. There's no room for that here. There's no, no room for that in this world that we've been working hard to get to mm -hmm. and to, to limit our mistakes and to, to continue to build our respect. And, and what scares me about that is that if there's other guys out there that's doing that or have done that and that are forgiven now, I would say, what do, what do, what do we do with them? How does that work? 
moving on. That's the only thing I'm kind of confused about because if, if I'm like, I'm good, but there's, I might run into a couple people and forgot that they might have been in that situation. Haven't seen it. That's just fucking unacceptable. I've never ever seen nothing like that in my life. I'm, I'm never witnessed nothing like that in person or on camera besides the Tina Turner movie. Right. That shit was out of bounds, right? Right, for sure. So if I didn't see somebody else do it, but I heard about it, and they, they're, they're forgiving, now that I know that, what do I do with these niggas? What do I do with them? What do you do? What do we do? I'm asking you. Right. Oh, you, I, I agree with you. I've, I've never been around in a situation like that. I've never seen, don't know of anything to that nature, but had I, I would all, I would intervene. I would have went crazy. I would intervene. I'm not gonna let yeah. you do, I'm not gonna let you do that. Cause I've never, trust me, I got a sister, mom, and a daughter. It would have been so. my pleasure to get busy and protect whoever was yeah. going through that. And I and Cassie, like you are, uh, you are strong, and you, yeah. you, you, you know, we're talking about your situation. So with all due respect, I'm sorry for everything that you encountered. I've been around you. I've been around y'all. I never knew. You know what I'm saying? Um, and I apologize for even just for even continuing to just be around like i don't know what who i am mm -hmm. now knowing this i know what i won't allow and um so if i know anybody around me that's active in that world i'm gonna leave. now a lot of fans are calling bs on ray claiming that he never saw diddy act like that considering how open diddy was about everything with his close circle ray's words are hard to believe but if ray's words are really true then why did he go after fabulous okay so i ain't gonna curse but these punk faggots and excuse my language but you know what i'm saying be whoever you want to be love whoever you want to love i didn't mean it like that i just meant when you want to disrespect me and the money team and we got seven Rolls Royces outside and we just made 350 racks on the... Don't disrespect me. I'm going to smack you up again, fool. All right, so Ray J, let's what I'm saying. You saying Ray J got beat up? I'll shock that in the face, my So you punch Fab in the face. One time. You, hey, all I'm saying is if you got Fab number, tell that send a picture of his face right now. Wow. Okay, Ray J, let me ask you. So this is what happened because you didn't like... You didn't like what he was saying on, on Twitter, like making nah, jokes. Like, look, don't disrespect me and Floyd like that. I play piano on that motherfucking piano every day. That's my big bro. N grew up together. So if you think I just came over there and sang a song, then you got me motherfucking twisted. I'm always over there, n***a. Well, remember, we so, on air, Ray. We on air, Ray. You can't curse me. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Envy. I'm so, sorry. So go ahead. So, Envy, I'm so, sorry. Are we live? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're posting me. What happened? What? I said, so you, you went up to him at the after party. I'm with what, the what money happened? team right now. We are over uh -oh. here. I swear to God, he running for me right now. I had a hundred fools outside of Moon right now. He never left the club. He was scared up in there. He tried to call the police. So when you hit him, what did he do, right? Nothing. He fell back because he's a sucker. Okay, I'm now, Ray J, let me ask you. So he didn't, he didn't hit I, you look, back? Look, look, check this out. No disrespect. Like, shout out to my big... Some folks think he might have been doing Diddy's dirty work since Fab kind of turned down Diddy's offer to party. <laughs> What's, What's going that? on, my brother? How you oh, doing? man. Oh, man. Yo, it's Groove here? Happy yeah, birthday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Happy birthday, yeah, birthday yeah. to you. Woo! Happy birthday to you. Woo! Uh, happy birthday to Fabulous. <laughs> the only nigga that got the name that I want. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Happy birthday to you. Um, yeah. Let's take a shot for that one. <laughs> my mouth a little dry. I'm just gonna fucking But um, no, it's your show today. Yeah. The, the, the one thing I've been noticing. Oh no, you got questions. Okay. Groove, look, bro. Come in, bro, bro, bro. See where I look, Did you look back me? on where I became. Did you miss me though? Mm. For real, because we, I'm I saying, miss, it seems like a thing. I miss his birthday party, man. Man, but I'm talking about for your birthday. Huh? Why won't you party with me for?